Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, this is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings. I am Gary Mack, your host, and uh, I hope you all had a great 10 or 12 days, whatever it is, since our last episode. Trying to get on a weekly schedule, it is a little tough. I even wanted to do this show before the road trip, but, you know, things get in the way sometime. But the Mets are in the middle of a road trip now, a very important road trip. They are out in San Diego. They have taken two out of three so far. Game four in the final game in that series against San Diego is today in literally an hour from now. Uh, So we won't have any results, of course, on that. But that will be an important game. They need to win this game and win the series. But instead of me going on and talking about it, Let's read an email that I got from my good friend Jeff Cohen of Baseball and Barbecue. Now, Jeff sent this email before the road trip, so he talks about 10 games in it, but you know what he means. So, suffice to say that this is a crucial road trip. 10 days, 10 games, two series against the teams fighting for a wild card spot. The Mets can't be in a position to lose more than two or three games on this road trip. Now the trip ends against the worst team in MLB, the Chicago White Sox. We know the Mets tend to play down to their competition. Heck, we just saw this against the Marlins, who play like the 1927 Yankees when they play the Mets. The season series is over with the Marlins, and they are a pathetic 7-6 versus them. The Marlins have won a total of seven games versus the rest of the NL East, but when it comes to the Mets, they just play them at another level. There are less than 40 games remaining in the season. If Pete Alonso wants to test the market for a big contract, he needs to start hitting for power. I know he has 27 home runs as of this email, but he hasn't had that one hot streak where he is putting the team on his back. The team will only go as far as Pete can take them. Some say that I have been harsh on Pete. Well, that may be, but last year he hit 217, but had 46 home runs and 116 RBIs. He is on track to strike out the most in his career this year. I guess I am expecting more from Pete being a homegrown player who has the chance to set many New York Met records. But the fact is, I am a big Pete Alonzo fan. I think he brings more to the team than just being a player. He is big in the community and charity. But we know in the end, money talks and everything else walks. Also, disappointment with his statement that he is satisfied with his season, being an all-star, etc. Remember, it was some controversy over that statement he made. Uh, at the All-Star break. As for this trip coming up, 10 games. 7-3 and three would be difficult, but then again, they do play to their competition in S- and San Diego and Arizona are good teams. Wouldn't it be nice to get on a hot streak in the last month which would propel the team in the playoffs? Under the Manfred system, the best teams don't necessarily win the World Series. He has made it so the hottest team does. He is hoping the Mets get hot, and Pete is the player to put the team on his back and say, let's go Mets. And he signs it, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. Well, I agree with everything that uh, my friend Jeff says. 
They have to win. They have to win games. It would be wonderful to have a hot streak start, uh, to keep their head above water, stay where they are, maybe move up a game. Right now, as of today, on Sunday, August uh, uh, 25th, they are two and a half games out of the final wild card spot. They have to stay in that neighborhood. If they can get close, great. Stay in that neighborhood. And then if they can get hot in September and ride into the playoffs red hot, um, you know, that would be that would be wonderful. I mean, it would be terrific if they could do that. It's a tall order, but I don't see why other teams have done it. Look at the Phillies two years ago. They got red hot at the end of the season. Zoomed right through everything. Nobody expected them to get through the Dodgers and, and the Braves and all the other teams that were above them. Hey, they just cut right through them. Texas, the same way. Texas just buzzsawed through everybody, and and they weren't expected to do that, but they got hot at the right time, and, man, it sure would be nice if the Mets could do the same thing. Stay close, and then buzzsaw your way through the playoffs and uh, into, uh, into the playoffs and into the World Series and hopefully bring it home. All right, uh, let's look at some play. The Mets are getting some bodies back, so maybe they'll help. Uh, Stolen Marte is back. Dead Neil Nuez was activated the other day from uh, uh, the IL Friday night, as a matter of fact. Unfortunately for Oscar Brazapan, he was the reliever who was optioned to make room for Nunez. Brazapan struggled in Thursday's game, allowing two runs on uh, uh, two runs on two hits in the ninth inning of the Mets' eight to three win. Since arriving to the Mets after a trade with the Marlins in late July, he struggled in nine appearances with New York. The right hand is pitched to a six point three zero ERA, allowing seven runs in ten innings and a one point six zero WHIP. And of course. Nunez was so outstanding early in the year that now he's back and he's looked good. Uh, pitched uh, last night, I believe it was, and uh, looked terrific. So um, Nunez is back. Brazapan is out, and we'll see if he makes it back up uh, before the end of the year. Uh, Mark Vientos has continued his hitting. And he's continued to impact the Mets season with not only his bat, but his defense at third base has improved tremendously. Uh, Carlos Mendoza says that Vientos has been really good at third base and continues to make progress at third base. The biggest thing for me is how he's engaged in pitch-to-pitch, Mendoza explained. He's into it. He's talking to third base coach Mike Sawbaugh. Uh, Francisco Lindor in different game situations, and that's what you want, especially from a young player, to continue to learn the game itself. So Lindor is helping Vientos, and Vientos has really had a terrific year. You know, just when you think he, he goes into these little slumps, has a bad game or two, and then bam, the next game, he comes out and gets a couple of hits and big hits and drives in runs, too. He's been driving in runs, which is also another key thing. So um, Mark Vientos has, has really taken that job, that third base job. He's taken the bull by the horns, and he's really uh, done a fine job. And and like I said, he, his defense is a little rough, granted, but it's getting better. And he's working on it. And that's all you can ask uh, a young player. Now, the Mets had a scare on Friday night. Paul Blackburn uh, exited the uh, game when he got hit in the third inning with a line drive on his pitching hand. The Mets diagnosed him with a hand condition uh, contusion. Initial x-rays were inconclusive, but further imaging on Mets starter 
Blackburn's right on came back negative, and the right-hander is hopeful he will not land on the injured list. It's a bone bruise, ultimately, so yeah, good news, Blackburn said from the visitors' locker room before Saturday's game. Manager Carlos Mendoza said the club will have a better idea about it if it's about if a stint on the IL is necessary after he plays catch on Sunday after undergoing treatment. The good thing is we got good news, the skipper said, but we got to wait till tomorrow and see if he's going to be able to pick up a baseball and actually go out there and play catch. So they'll find out today whether uh, he can uh, go out and play catch, and if he can, that'll be a big boost uh, to this um, to this team. If not, I guess uh, Tyler McGill will be one of the options and another might be um, uh, Christian Scott. If he can come back, he began playing catch on flat ground in late August and was incorporating change-ups into re- routine as of... Uh, August 22nd. Scott's ability to make it back before the end of the season will go a long way toward determining his long-term prognosis. So we'll have to see. Remember, he had that um, he had an injury. I thought he might need Tommy John surgery, but they're treating it this way. And we will see where that goes from here. And Cody Senga injured his leg in pursuit of a pop-up in the sixth inning of the Mets' 8-4 victory over the Braves on July 26th, went on the injured list one day later and was transferred to the 68-day IL a day after that. He has spent all but one on the season on the IL and will re- remain there until at least September 26th. If all goes well in Senga's recovery... He could at least potentially return for the playoffs, but he still wasn't throwing as of August 22nd, and um, that's going to be a milestone. He's got to uh, to start throwing. That was three days ago, and no update on whether he has begun or not. Once Senga begins playing catch off flat ground, Mets officials will have a better idea about his likelihood of returning now. With the leg injury, he he's been, I think, throwing uh, seated, but not uh, off of flat ground. So they they have to get uh, they have to get him on the ground and uh, throwing to build up the arm even more and to build up the leg strength and everything else that goes along with that. So that's the situation with the Mets. They're getting some bodies back. Some other bodies are questionable. Excuse me. They could get them back for the postseason. Uh, that would be a boost if you could get a guy like Senga and Scott back towards the end of September. And, uh, you know, maybe the other guys are getting a little tired. You boost in some guys there with fresh arms. That could be a big, big, big help. But it's all relative. I mean, you know, they've got to get healthy. They've got to be able to come back. We can't just bring them back. And, uh, so, you know, uh, that's, that's the way it goes. As I mentioned, Starling Monte is back and Ben Gamble is out. So that's the way that works. Unfortunately, you, you get somebody back. Somebody's got to go. Um, but, that's the roundup so far for the Mets. Uh, go, as I said, in the middle of this big road trip, and today's going to be a key game, and then three, the next four games are going to be huge. Three in, in Arizona after the one game remaining in San Diego, and they really can't afford to lose much more. I mean, if they if they split in San Diego, they've got to take two and two out of three in Arizona, and then they have to uh, sweep the White Sox. They got to try to come back eight and two, seven and three. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the last home stand really hurt them, uh, losing two out of three. 
to Oakland. Uh, you know, uh, a, a five and four homestand versus a six and three is huge, very big. And they did, you know, they just didn't play well. So uh, let's take a break and we'll come back with a minor league report right after. Let's see, where are we? Right after this. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. Okay, and we are back, and now it's time to go. (laughs) Yes, we're going down on the farm. Here's the minor league report. Check out what's going on. Led by Tyler McGill and Shintaro Fujinami, the Syracuse Mets, Yet yeah, last night pitched a combined one hitter in their victory over the Durham Bulls. So McGill is pitching better in AAA, and, and should Blackburn miss a start, I guess McGill would get the call. Um, Mets prospect Drew Gilbert is also uh, he getting heated up in AAA Syracuse. Gilbert went one for five on Friday's win over nine, uh, win nine six over the Durham Bull, and that one hit was a three hundred and fifty foot home run, blast in the third inning and put the Syracuse Mets up four to three at the time. His homer was his third in Triple A the season. Remember, he's only played in twenty nine games at that level due to injuries, but his second in three games. He's also 5 for 21 over his last five games. Jonah Tong was the sensational 20-year-old pitcher for the Brooklyn Cyclones. He was electric for Brooklyn on Friday night. He struck out eight uh, blue claws in just five innings. It was also Tong's first scoreless outing since July 2nd. So uh, Jonah Tong continues to have an outstanding season and to impress everybody. And uh, he, he, he sort of kind of reminds you, uh, his his uh, motion kind of reminds you of Doc Gooden a little bit with a high leg kick and all. But uh, he just looks sensational. Let's just hope that he stays healthy, works his way through the system. They're really taking their time with him, which was – uh, very smart. He started the season in St. Lucie, dominated there, brought, brought him up to Brooklyn. He uh, started a little bit slow and and then has been, uh, you know, terrific uh, the last month or so, last two months, and has played really well. So let's, they're, they're taking their time with him, and, and I think that's a good idea. So, uh, you know, we'll see how he does next season in Binghamton, maybe, and AAA, and who knows. If he continues to progress the way he's progressing, he could be, we could see him up at City Field real soon. So, Jonah Tong, remember that name, uh, pitching good. Um, let's see. Towards the end of April, Jet Williams began dealing with a bout of right wrist soreness that ultimately resulted in a June 6th operation to fix the issue. Williams spent most of the summer recovering from the surgery and began a rehab assignment August 21st for a single A St. Lucie, which gives him a chance to come off the minor league injured list before the end 
of the regular season. So maybe Chet Williams will get to see uh, Jet Williams will get to see some action uh, this season. It's been kind of a lost season for him. Had a terrific year last year. Had a uh, you know uh, was impressive in spring training. Then came the season. He struggled. Had the injury. Um, wouldn't go away. They operated in June. He's been re- recovering ever since and rehabbing it. So maybe he'll get to see some game action before the end of the year, and that will be a big boost to the uh, to him going into next season. Uh, let's take a look at the record. Syracuse is 22-27, and 27, 10 games back in their division in eighth place. Binghamton is 26-23, and 23, seven games back in third place. Brooklyn is 24-29, and 29, seven games back in fifth place in their respective division. And St. Lucie is 17-34, 20 games back in and in last place in their respective division. All of those uh, uh, win-losses are based on the second-half record so far. So um, not the best, but, you know, guys have been up and down and, you know, being promoted, and that kind of hurts the team, throws it off a little bit when they do that kind of thing. So, uh, But that's that's the way it goes. All right, the Mets have one more, as I said, with San Diego, three with Arizona, then travel to Chicago to play the White Sox, and uh, before they get to come home again. And all of these games are important now. They're all going to be important coming in now into the month of September and to the end of the year. All the games are important got to win as much as you can win series and uh, hopefully stay in that hunt and that fight for the wild card and grab that last wild card spot or progress even to the, the to the second or first wild card spot we'll take that as well we're not particular okay well that's going to wrap it up for this sh- this show i hope you'll subscribe and like on youtube the show We are now also on Rumble, so if Rumble is your video choice, check out Mets Musings on Rumble as well. Uh, And again, leave a like or subscription and uh, on Rumble as well. And we are on all audio podcasts, so just use your podcast app, whatever it is, and uh, you'll find us there. So... Until next time, remember, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. And I'll see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings.